Good morning, friends. It's Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter, and uh, we're going to paint a picture of a peony today. And I just wanted to first go over some new paper I'm going to work with today. This is Strathmore 400 series watercolor paper. It's fairly inexpensive, and you can find it at any of your big box uh, art and craft stores. Now, um, this is a block of paper, meaning it's unlike a pad that's loose on three sides, it's actually bound on all four sides, therefore eliminating the need to stretch it. So that's just something that you may want to consider. Um, it's usually a, a little bit more than a pad, but it's it's worth it for not having to stretch it or tape it down. Now on the edge you'll see a spot on one of the edges where there's no um, gum tape and what you do is you slide, when you're done you slide a palette knife in there and you just slice it off the top and the next sheet is ready to go. Uh, we're going to begin by drawing with a watercolor pencil. Um, you can use a regular pencil too, I'm just using a watercolor pencil so I can draw really dark and, um, and then not have to worry about my lines thereafter. So what I'm going to do is start with kind of like a um, semicircle here. Okay, I'm going to start drawing my petals a little bit darker, but I wanted to get that this uh, focal point flower here, and I'm going to put, we're kind of seeing it from the back, so I'm going to put the um, kind of the back area where the stem is going to touch right in there, and then I'm going to throw in a few leaves. This is a peony flower, by the way. The one of, some of my favorites. My mother has a bunch growing in her... Um, in her backyard. She has a green thumb. My sister has a green thumb. I skipped my generation apparently, but it was funny. We had big plans yesterday. We were going to um, drive to New Hampshire and go to Santa's Village, and we'd been planning this for a couple of weeks, um, and wouldn't you know, <laughs> severe thunderstorm warnings all day yesterday, and um, so we decided we'd still get together, but we would skip uh, driving that far, and we would just hang around the house, and uh, we had a really fun day. Um, and it was really funny because my nephew, who was not yet five. He's always been a little leery of me. I'm not sure why. My mother thinks it's because I represent authority, which I find just totally hard to believe. <laughs> but um, but I think it's the fact that I have three kids, so I don't put up with anybody's shenanigans. And, um, and, you know, he's an only child, so, you know, he's always testing to see what he can get away with. And, um, and uh, uh, last a couple weeks ago, we found a snake in my mother's basement, and I, unlike a lot of the other people, weren't afraid of it, and I actually touched it, and I'm like, okay, go put it in the field, let it go, and so then I think now in his mind, I am the fearless woman who will uh, help him obtain his goal of having a pet snake, so <laughs> we went on a trek to find a, um, a pet snake yesterday. It was so funny. I'm going to start just a little bit of an edge of a flower here, just kind of off the page. Um, I'm just putting in some wiggly petals. <clears throat> you see, all I'm doing here is just wiggly lines within my shape, and that's really all it is to uh, to draw these petals. So I want to put a background in, and I'll get back to my snake story in a minute. Uh, so to paint my background, what I'm going to do is just wet ooh, my bucket. The bottom of my bucket was not very clean. I'm going to brush that right off there. Um, I'm just going to wet the background here. And uh, the cool thing about watercolor is the paint's only going to go where the paper is wet. So go ahead and wet your paper. Don't worry about it getting into the flower a little bit. Um, but really, we want to mostly just wet the background so that our flower will stay nice and bright. I am just going to kind of gently go over the edges of the flower because I want to. Uh, I want. I don't want it to stand out like a sore thumb when we go to paint it. So that's fine too. We we'll just soften that up a little bit on the edges. We just want the, the majority of the flower, though, to stay dry so that we can control our paint on there later. All right, so if you tip your paper like that, you'll see that it's shiny wherever it's wet, and that's what we want. We'll go over near the stem a little bit more. And uh, we're going to add some ultramarine blue up to the top here. Let's go right in. I like to mix it on your palette a little bit first, like I'm doing here, because that way you won't end up with a big glob on your brush. Because once you, if you get a like a concentrated glob on your paper, it's very hard to control. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw some of that in here. Oh, if you get a little where you don't want it, just give it a little, give it a little blot. Went a little crazy with that there. That's all right. I'm fearless. Remember, I'm the fearless snake wrangler. <laughs> oh yeah. So we went, we went, uh, we went all around the property looking for a pet snake for my young nephew. <laughs> I'm like, what are we going to do if we actually find this? His mother's not going to be impressed. So I said, your mother's not going to want you to have a pet snake. Well, we're going to put it in a cage on the porch. Oh, I see. That sounds like a foolproof plan. <laughs> oh, yes. Luckily, I didn't find one. My sister would not have been happy. <laughs> All right. So I'm mixing a little uh, burnt sienna into my blue and making some gray. And we're going to put some of that in around. Remember, this is just a background. It's going to dry so much lighter. So really, don't fret if it looks a little dark. It's going to be lighter. 
the back it's just it's so much easier to do the background now because you don't have to worry about messing up your painting see you get to be fearless like aunt lindsay be fearless like aunt lindsay i'm gonna grab a little sap green here i really gotta water that down that's pretty uh pretty bright and i'm gonna add some of this in here i'm just gonna kind of go around to the edge of my flower and let it spread around and this is at this point i also like to add in any colors i contemplate or i think i'm likely to use in my painting so that way i'll have a, a nice harmony throughout the piece I'll dab in my sap green a lot more at the bottom here can use some um more of my ultramarine blue with that too and that will darken it up a little bit without making it muddy and that's kind of nice to throw in here at the bottom I just basically like to get something down. I don't like a stark white background, but um, you know, there's nothing wrong with a, ba a white background if that's what you like. It's gonna give us some contrast. These flowers are gonna be very light pink, so we wanna make sure we get some contrast there. And it's so much easier to get your background in when the paper's wet than to try to put it in later, because then you end up with these um, awkward edges. So I'm just trying to help you avoid that. I want to add a little bit of yellow, and I think I'm going to go with a cad yellow light, or you can use a lemon yellow, just a nice, bright, fresh, um, springy yellow, a cool yellow. A warm yellow would lead more towards orange. A cool yellow is more towards green. Just throw some of that in there. I just want some nice soft edges. And then I want the illusion of some more flowers in the um, in the background. So what I'm going to do is actually just get, get some, um, you can use mauve, you can use uh, rose, whatever you plan on using for your flower. You can dab some of that in into the wet paper. Just kind of put some splotches back there. If you get mud, just wipe off your brush and put some more in. You can always blot it out if you get if it gets like too too gray. I don't really mind that, but if you don't like that, you could just simply blot it out with a clean paper towel. I feel like I want a little bit more ultramarine up there in the sky, so I'm gonna go in and add some of that before it dries. I want my background very soft and blendy, so that's why I'm working wet into wet. So whenever so I get asked that a lot when uh um, do I always have to work a wet background? No, you don't. You can do whatever you want, but if your background's wet, your colors will blend and will be soft. So just keep that in mind. If you want a soft blended uh, look, make sure your paper's wet. If you want hard edges, make sure your paper's dry. You know, that's it. And it's all, it's all up to you how you want to do it. All right, I'm going to let this dry and then we'll come back and we will paint the peonies. Okay, the background is mostly dry. It's dry enough for this um, for this purpose. And what we're going to do is now um, grab a small, like a half inch flat brush. And um, I'm gonna start working on these petals in the center. So I'm just gonna wet this petal. And as you can see, it's already pulling some of the uh, color that I sketched with, so that's kind of pretty. Um, and what I'm gonna do is add some color to the center on this damp petal. I'm using that same mauve that we put in the background. You can use um, a rose or whatever color you want. I'm just gonna add it here into the center here at the base of the petal. And mauve is kind of a staining color, so um, so we dampen the petal first just so that we'll, it'll help it blend. And then I cleaned my brush and just blotted it, and then I'm just working over the edge so it would blend out. So it's such an uh, easy technique to get a nice blended petal there. There, now what I can do with my credit card scraper tool, which I have over here, I can just scratch in a few vines, a few uh, veins, I mean. It gives me a nice subtle look, and if I want, I can go in with a little bit more to accentuate it right there in the center, let it seep into those lines. See, when you paint over it, you really get a nice, uh, really get a nice detail there. I'm bringing it up so you can see. And we're going to do the same treatment on, um, on the other petals as well. I like to skip, though. I like to... Um, go next door so that I don't um, spread out the paint there. I notice that this uh, paper, it's not blending too, uh, it's not, um, it's very easy to control your paint on this. I hadn't used this in a while, um, so I thought I would get a pad of this when I was placing an order um, for some frames and other supplies. So I figured I would, I would throw this on there because it was, um, it was a good price and, uh, I know it's a it's an easy to find affordable paper. Now that I don't even feel like I really need to blend too much because it's already pretty blended. I'm just gonna soften it a little bit. I'm gonna go in with my scraper. 
scrape in some of those veins. I like to vary each petal a little bit so that it, they're all just a little bit different. And then you can see that paint just kind of gather and soak into those uh, those scratches. Because really when you scrape you're kind of damaging the paper but it it's you're using that to your advantage. Now I also feel like I want a little bit of shadow in there so I'm going to grab some of that ultramarine, add it into some of that mauve. It's going to give me like a purple color and I'm just going to put that in there. That's kind of going to give that a little bit of a shadow since there are brighter petals here at the top and I want to have a little bit of contrast there. So I got the ultramarine in there too. Give that a little bit of a shadow. And um, I think I want to do the same thing to one of these petals in the back here. I'm just actually going to go right in there with the that mix paint a few of those because they don't really need to be, I don't need to spend quite as much time on every single petal. And if it gets into a little of that green, it's just going to make it grayer. I'm not worried about that. Life's too short to worry about your your paintings. You should have fun and enjoy it. And I think I'll just grab what I have left of that gray and just throw in just a little bit right in there. All right, I know it looks pretty sloppy, but don't worry. We'll, uh, we'll wrap, pull it all around here. And down here on this flower, which is really not our focal point, I'm just going to go ahead and wet the whole thing. And uh, we've got our pencil marks that are going to help us keep our definition. And I'm just going to add some of the mauve to that. Maybe a little bit brighter here at the bottom. Let it blend up. I don't want this one to be as pronounced. I'm going to put some sap green in there. leaf there. I think while I have my sap green out, I'll actually put the stem in for this guy. I'm still using that uh, half inch brush, but if you prefer to use a round, you can go ahead and use a round. And I want to put some of the leaves in. <clears throat> so I'm going to grab my, sorry I'm a little froggy, I'm a little froggy in the morning. Uh, I apologize. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm going to um, start by having my brush kind of uh, right up against the stem. And then I'm going to press it down, and these are kind of long petals. I'm going to twist and lift as I go. Now if that is um, too samey in color, then I can grab a little bit of my ultramarine and I can add that, just kind of drip that in for a little bit of a shadow. And it helps it look a little more lively, so you can do that. And you'll need quite a few of these, and feel free to turn your paper around if you need to. Um, I find it's, it's a little bit easier for me to pull a leaf towards myself than it is to um, go the other direction. And if you can do it in one stroke, which that one didn't come out quite right, quite right for one stroke, but if you can do it in one stroke, it does um, it does look a lot more natural. And um, you can use any kind of combinations of yellows and greens to do these leaves. It'll just kind of look like the sun's hitting them more if it's got if it's got more yellow. It'll look a little bit. Um, more of a mature leaf if it's got more green. If it's got more blue, then it's got more of a shadow in it. And that's, you know, just do a variety of them. Because you have a lot of plants here, and that's just going to help uh, add a little interest to your background. That's why we don't worry. It's spent too much time in the background because, um, because you're going to cover a lot of it up. So you might as well, you know, practice, get that practice in, get kind of break the ice a little bit in that, those first things you do that make, do the back wet and wet, but have, blah, 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 ha! wet and wet background first and break the ice with that. And then, um, and then as you get more used to it, you, you kind of refine as you build up. There we go. Oh my goodness. I'm having a hard time with words today. Whew. Let's go back to my snake story. <laughs> We did not find a snake. We looked all through the field. We looked up against the buildings. Um, we we found a couple of holes, which we think might have like a hedgehog or um, I don't know a mouse or something. But we did not find any anything of of interest. Although my nephew was happy to to uh, bring home whatever he should find, whatever sort of rodent or animal that he should find. Uh, I think my sister's very relieved that I didn't find anything. All right, so let's go back in some mauve here, and uh, oh, let's go wet um, water petals. The cool thing about the ink tents here by using it um, as a uh, as a sketching medium is that once it once you've done that first wash over it, it's actually going to um, 
it's actually going to be permanent once it dries so that does have a little bit of an advantage over just a traditional watercolor pencil but I have to say I really like having the option of both ink tense pencils and watercolor and of course if you don't have either go ahead and sketch it with a pencil you don't need to have you need to have it. it is fun if you're kind of wondering what to ask for for your birthday if you're a painter if you're a watercolor painter um, a set of ink tense pencils is a great uh, a great addition to your kit I think just plain watercolors is the best way to go if you don't have anything I'm going to take a little bit of that lemon yellow now, or cadmium yellow light. I'm going to add quite a bit of water to it on my palette here. Let's see if I can bring that over. I'm adding water to it. I don't want to have it really, really bright. And I'm going to blot it even on my paper towel. And then I'm just going to give it a little bit of wash here at the top of the petals. And that's just going to warm it up and make it feel like the sun's hitting it. So it's like it's trapping some of that light. And I just want to get the tips of those petals. Just blot your brush and wipe out any, um, if it's too bright, just blot your brush and wipe it out. I just want, I like having that, um, that warmth in the flower. I'm going to do a little bit on that one too. And that's the thing, you don't need to um, add detail to everything. I think we, you know, when we're painting, we're like, oh, well, we've got to look at everything. We've got to add e detail to every little thing. No, you detail one thing and then everything else will look natural. That's a kind of an, uh, mark of an amateur painting is is to see everything in sharp detail it looks very flat you need to have some things detailed and some things need to be fuzzy so that it looks like the way your eyes see things even the way a camera see, sees things if you look you know uh, a beautiful f photograph usually only part of it is in focus and the rest is kind of out of focus I'm just going in and adding some shadows with my mauve now I'm going to be careful not to go over that purple too much because mauve uh, to go with the yellow too much because mauve is kind of purpley and uh, purple and yellow are opposites and they'll make mud so we've got to be careful about that same thing with that yellowy green that we're using there we've got to be careful that we don't uh, let those mix up too much or we're going to get mud so I'm just going in and adding some dark in and around the petals wherever I feel like it needs a little contrast and I like the more of the purpley color up into the center of the flower that's generally how uh, they generally get a little bit lighter out to the petals and we're just building up some of that color going in behind some of those petals and you know just kind of dab until you until you're happy all right now I'm gonna work on this um, this part right here I'm gonna start by uh, with a damp brush just kind of liquefying the pencil marks here now if you're not using a pencil you can just wet the uh, the these little leaf areas and then I'm going in with some sap green and I'm just gonna let the color kind of spread out I'm gonna try to keep it away from the flower if you want to let the flower dry first before you do this go right ahead I just want to keep this video uh, under 20 minutes it's looking like I might be able to achieve that <laughs> Or might do it over because I hate to edit and I hate to make you suffer through a long video even though a lot of you say you don't mind still all right now I'm gonna let this dry and we'll come back and we'll finish it up all right uh, I want to define my stem a little bit so what I'm gonna do is I've, I've uh, cleaned my brush off and I've squeezed up the extra water and I'm just lifting the uh, the stem a little bit there so that the stem comes all the way to up to the top of the flower and I'm gonna add a little of that cadmium yellow in there all right it brightens it right up then I want to put a unifying wash over the flower because now that I look at it it seems a little too um, too stark to me so I'm just brushing clear water over the entire thing gently and uh, maybe avoiding the yellow a little bit at the top but I'm gonna do a really light wash of the mauve use whatever pink you were using or purple or whatever you're using for that just a very soft wash over there because it's looking a little too um, too hard edge to me and if you want to add some more detail you can use your credit card scraper just to go ahead and throw in some veins and I think that's really all the detail you're going to need for this um, and do a little bit of that wash back here just be careful to avoid the green and really you don't really need to add too much more of this I think maybe I'll put a little bit of detail down here onto this flower I'm just gonna use my brush I'm gonna get half of it in the mauve and I'm just gonna kinda go around and accentuate some of the petals. So I hope you like this tutorial. Please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. If you did, uh, if you have any questions, leave them below. And until next time, happy crafting.